last video we talked about connections and connection references and we already teased the content of today's video which is service accounts versus service principle in a nutshell we are going to see about how to authenticate in production via a service account or a service principle when is uh, more adequate to do one or the other and what are the prerequisites that we'll need also in terms of licensing so let's take a look hi i'm andres and welcome to my channel here we dive deep into the world of microsoft power platform development and governance please don't forget to hit that subscribe button and give this video a thumbs up to show your support and if you're looking to develop solutions for your business or need training and support for your technical team feel free to reach out through the link in the description or the pinned comment now let's get started with the video so let's start with a little bit of theory again. Uh, well, when we need to move to production, uh, we cannot deal with uh, the deployment, the connections, everything with a regular user, like an account like mine, Andres at whatever it is .com. We cannot do that. Why? Well, because uh, there is going to be problems with the connectors that we saw last time. So when we deploy to production, we will need to create connections for our connection references. And those connectors, uh, well, they need an identity to authenticate with so that we can say, yes, this user is able to talk with SharePoint and create an item in this list because it has the adequate permissions. But what happens when we have things in place which we need to have uh, in terms of password resets, uh, multi-factor authentication, you know, with the Windows Authenticator app, uh, when tokens, authentication tokens expire, uh, and all these kind of things that can cause issues and make our connections expire. And thus, as a result, uh, will make our flows fail. Well, that's not admissible admissible when we are working in production because uh, we cannot be every 14 days or whatever is the policy in each, each company be changing credentials, re-authenticating all the connectors before the token expires and hope, pray that the flows are not going to uh, stop and fail because of a connection issue. So to avoid those problems, what can we do? Well, use a service account and or, or a service principle. And it's not one or the other because there are scenarios where we just technology limitations can use a service principle, which would be, in my opinion, the preferred way. And we will see why in a moment. So for service accounts, what is a service account? Basically, it's a named account like mine, address at whatever.com. Um, that is used for the sole purpose to deploy and run the production solutions. So we have a, a service account, let's call it uh, finance automations at company.com. And the sole purpose of that uh, account is to deploy and uh, authenticate to the connections that are deployed to production. And then we are going to have, we'll see in a moment, some uh, exceptions for that particular account in terms of the policies that apply to that identity those that we mentioned the mfa the password reset those things we will need to have a special policy for service accounts and this is a typical scenario it happens uh, for if you work in a digital workplace environment well you already have service accounts that you use to for example uh, uh, do ship and backups and automations like that well you need the, those kind of accounts otherwise your systems won't work so this is a normal practice in every company now there are some um, services that only support service accounts for production that won't be able to use service principles and we will see about that in a moment and uh, why is that because there are some uh, some connectors that only support OAuth authentication which are uh, ship online outlook excel wonder among others but uh, these are the most typical ones that you probably use and then what about service principles service principles are an identity that are based in an application not a user and they are created in Azure, in the Azure portal. We will see about that in a moment. And basically, uh, this is a non-interactive, a non-user identity. Its sole purpose is to authenticate a, a program. And it's normal for automations, and it's widely used well, for Dataverse and the Azure services. And of course, if we are integrating directly with the Microsoft Graph API, which then if we uh, use a Graph API, and I mean, if, of course, it's handier to use the these connectors from Power Automate, but if we use the Graph API, uh, we can virtually 
uh, replicate all those behaviors with the Graph API. Of course, we don't do that because it's handier and easier to use the Power Automate connectors, but well, virtually you could do that. And custom connectors, depending on the service you're, you're authenticating against, you can use the service principle as well. All right, let's pick a flow and see how this works. Uh, Service accounts versus service principal. Well, let's imagine that, well, instead of using my account here, a personal account, I would be logging in with uh, finance automations at company.com. And uh, just to illustrate, well, when you change connections here, you use a connection reference, we already uh, saw about that last time. And you see here, if I need to create a new connection, uh, it's going to sign me in using the OAuth uh, method, the interactive method. So if I click sign in, a pop up will. Uh, pop up uh, and it will prompt me to authenticate with a particular uh, credential, which is, of course, uh, right now my, my user, but it could be the service account where, that we are using and would prompt me to enter my credentials and probably the MFA, the Windows Authenticator app. Now, that's one option, but what happens, let's pick Dataverse, which is a service that does allow me to use a service principle. How does that look like in Power Automate? Let's just pick a random action here. Just pick whatever. And here, when we select connection reference and add new, this is already changing. Look at this. So authentication, it's telling me OAuth, all of this, what you, we just saw is basically uh, this prompt uh, pop up interactive authentication. But if we change here to service principle, we are going to see a different thing. We are going to see how it makes us input this data over here a name and name it's a, a name for you, a display name, let's call it. A, but then client ID, client secret, and tenant. This is exactly the credentials that any administration, any service principal has a secret ID and the tenant we are connecting to because, well, in this case, the tenant is always our own Microsoft 365 tenant. Looking for help? We can assist you with consulting, custom development, and training for your development or digital workplace team. Go to my website, fill out the contact form, and I'll get back to you as soon as possible. Configuring a service account is no factor, but let's uh, see about how a service principle works in case you haven't seen that already. So we go to portalhr.com and we have to go to app registrations. Uh, and let's pick whichever you would create a new one, probably, uh, but let's pick an existing one. And uh, here, what we are seeing is that this is an app registration, uh, meaning that it's in just a way to tell um, a Active Directory and try the, hey, this identity is identified by this client ID and this client secret. And then we can, well, we can configure uh, here, what is it, what is it, what is it, Express an API, not, uh, API permissions. And uh, here you'll see where this identity, this service principle has access to, and we can be pretty granular here. Uh, we have some already here, but we can add whatever, and uh, these are the APIs that are exposed already out of the box. If we pick Dynamics, it's going to be for actually uh, data burns. Uh, we have here, well, Power Automate Admin Center, Services, uh, Diamond CRM, Dataverse again, Business Central, and Graph API here. Let's pick what uh, application or delegated. Uh, delegated means um, on behalf of a person, an application is with no uh, no actual person behind, so really service to service. And here, for example, you can see uh, all the uh, massive amount of permissions that we can select uh, because we can be, again, very granular when we configure a, a permissions for a service principle. And here, let's speak, for example, site, sites from SharePoint. This is all the permissions that we can uh, select for a SharePoint site. Uh, even site selected, so only give permissions to a particular site. Uh, this is very interesting because then it opens up a more um, security scenarios because let's face it, if we were to authenticate with my account, I have access to uh, lots of SharePoint sites, OneDrive, uh, Outlook, so my my email. So if my identity was stolen, well, we had we would have a, a very big problem. But if the application is stolen, uh, well, the damage is very limited. It's very limited because we have more granularity in terms of uh, what 
this service principle, this entity has access to. That being said, don't be afraid about using service accounts. Service accounts are very secure. Why? If we enable MFA, multi-factor authentication, the Windows Authenticator app, well, uh, last time I read was 98% uh, of attacks are reduced, are, are um, let's say, uh, not effective because of MFA. So just with multi-factor authentication, we're already providing a huge amount of security to secure our uh, connections and also the thing that we just discussed, the granularity, more or less applies also to service accounts. Service accounts, a user, technical user, only for used only for um, a particular deployment, a finance automations, for example. Well, we will only give access to that service account to what it needs. Basically, maybe a SharePoint site, Dataverse, and uh, maybe it has a mailbox, but is, this mailbox is only used for. Uh, this particular scenario. So again, if the identity was stolen, if they match to suppress, uh, suppress uh, the MFA, the damage is very limited, but also we have more ways to uh, increase the security and we'll see about that in a moment. So back to the slides, service account, service principles, uh, that's clear. So technical user versus an um, registration, right? So for uh, service accounts, we just saw that authentication is done with this interactive experience. And uh, well, we of course know when do we need a service account, right? For production environment, when we deploy to production. If you need a proxy indicator, should I be worried about needing a service account or not? If you are a citizen developer, think about are you using lots of uh, Outlook notifications for your users or approvals or Teams notifications, probably you don't want those to be in your name, right? It would be better if it's with a generic technical account name, then that's your indicator indicator that you probably need a service account. But let's back to uh, get back to topic. So what are the requirements for a service account that needs to be deploying a solution in production? Well, uh, number one is MFA activated. Yeah, it can be. Activated and it's a good thing that it's activated to increase security as we saw. Password reset, don't do that because then we will have the problem that we mentioned in the beginning of the video about connections um, expiring. Uh, and then what, li what licenses you need? It's a technical user. The uh, account needs to be licensed with Power Automat and Power Apps premium licenses, most probable. What if you need additional security um, because you are worried about a service account having so much power, so much access because you are re reusing, uh, utilizing that service account for several different applications? Well, if that's your scenario, which of course, I mean, you also need to think about how many service accounts do we need one per deployment, one per application, one per environment? Depends. Uh, well, we would need to talk about that. But uh, in the end, another way is with um, conditional access policy, uh, policies, meaning you can only log in with this service account if you are in a specific IP, a specific location, in a registered device for the organization, or in a VPN, for example. These are the most common ones. And with that, you are already introducing such of a, a security barrier that's virtually impossible. Let's face it, so you have MFA, so only certain p trusted people will be able to authenticate, okay? But then you can only log in from a specific VPN, which you need to access with a specific device provided by the company, registered by the company. I mean, with the, those security layers in place, it's uh, virtually impossible to surprise, surprise uh, security there. And what about service uh, principles? Well, um, service principles, term, uh, sorry, under, yeah, app registration, service to service, it's just an, an program authenticating against a uh, service. And um, we saw that it's uh, configured via Azure, right? We saw how, how it's done with an app registration. And uh, with uh, Dataverse, we would configure it here. You go to the uh, environment settings, we go to application users, and there you add the app registration, give it a security role. And then as we saw uh, in Power Automate, well, this is the old Power Automate experience. You just provide the client ID, client secret. And this is how it would look like in a program with a po this is a PowerShell comma, uh, comma uh, well, a snippet. And here we are saying it's the same as in Power Automate. Look at it, uh, we are giving a, App ID would be the client ID, 
client secret, it's a client secret, uh, 1099 ID, uh, it's here as, as well hard coded. Well, uh, this is the way any program, so with Power Automate, we would authenticate this way, but if we were writing a program in C Sharp, in PowerShell, in JavaScript, whatever is your language of choice, it's the same. Uh, and of course, uh, important, with a big star here, uh, Flows that use service principles need to be licensed with a per flow license, a capacity based license. Uh, why? Because, well, it's not there. We don't have a user with an email address. We have a service principle and a registration. And this needs to be licensed as well oh, with a capacity license. Well, and that's that. But before, um, before finishing the video, uh, let me tease you up with. Uh, Azure Key Vault. So if you were uh, thinking about, okay, service principle, this is great, but how do I manage uh, the client ID, client secret for this service principle? Because I will have the problem that where do I store the credentials? Uh, if I have a different service principle in dev and test and prod environments, because of course, if I'm using a service principle approach, uh, I will have a different one in production than in, in def and test, right? So how do I do that? Well, the answer is Azure Key Vault. There is uh, Azure Key Vault is a service provided by Microsoft in the Azure portfolio that allows us to um, hold credentials and certificates for authenticating and uh, do things like auto renewal because the client secret, the secret expires uh, and well, you ha can put a very, uh, long limit i think maybe 30, 36 months something like that but if you want a, a more of a security with maybe i don't know three months every few months it needs to expire well you need to handle the changing of the client secret so that you we, we don't have at the equivalent of a password reset problem with our connections uh, how would you do that with uh, a short keyboard so if you want to know more about that well um i will make a video ask me ask me for that in the comments um and we'll see you in the next video thank you very much for uh, reaching to the end and well